In today's video, we're gonna dive into one of the fundamentals of bracket racing, one of the most requested videos on all of the channel, one of the most frequently commented and questioned topics in all of the race day vlogs that we post, that is finish line driving. Stay tuned. What's up guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom and on this channel, we post weekly bracket racing content in the form of race day vlogs, garage vlogs, product reviews, interviews, as well as tips and tutorial style videos just like this one. If that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing. Finish line driving, as you know, is one of the key fundamentals inside the sport of bracket racing. There's several different points of view regarding this topic out there. Honestly, it seems like everyone you talk to has their own preferences and strategies and things that work best for them. So please look at this information with an open mind. I'm going to share what works best for me and I've I've been bracket racing, I'm going on my 16th full season. Today I wanna to share something called finish line rhythm. Finish line rhythm mostly applies when we are the slower car, looking back at our opponent. Some of these ideas may translate into a situation where we are chasing our opponent, but just know that I'm primarily talking about driving the stripe when we are getting chased. I'll start by briefly recapping a topic that I shared on the channel in the past, that is turn 90. Turn 90 is a method of finish line driving. I'm a big advocate of driving the stripe this way, turning your head 90 degrees to judge your track position versus your opponent. The other commonly used method is to drive the stripe while watching your opponent's front wheels or whatever part of the vehicle trips the finish line beams. In short, there are times when both of these methods probably work better than the other. I do have an older video on the channel that covers this in much more detail, and I will link that down in the description, but please, do not go and watch it because I cringed so hard when I went back and watched it before making this video. It's just, it was a while ago. So now that we know that we are turning 90 and we are getting chased by the faster car, I wanna talk about this finish line rhythm. The rhythm that I'm referring to is our head turning rhythm the timing in which we turn and look back at our opponent. The reason it is important to have a finish line rhythm is so that we can ensure that we have eyes on our opponent's vehicle as we cross the finish line with them. Now this might sound totally obvious. I mean, obviously we have to look at our opponent as we're crossing the finish line with them, but this is actually really easy to mess up, especially when you're hanging onto the wheel of a 150 mile an hour race car and the whole race lasts less than five seconds. You can mess it up. It can happen, I know it because I've done it. You can get into a situation where you have your head turned 90 degrees and you're getting a great sense of the closing rate of your opponent versus you on the racetrack, but eventually you're gonna get a little bit uncomfortable driving that race car with your head turned sideways. What you don't want is that feeling of discomfort to happen right as you approach the finish line timers. Now I know some very successful racers who take as many looks back at their opponent as they possibly can going down the track. They look at it as each look is kind of a snapshot in time as you go down the racetrack. More looks equals more snapshots, which is good, but in my experience, too many looks can lead to losing sense of the finish line position and ultimately mistiming your looks through the finish line traps, which is bad. I know because I've done it. What I now focus on is my finish line rhythm, and it is not complicated. It's gonna sound like I'm putting way too much thought into this and that I'm overthinking everything and blah, 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 I can already hear it. But honestly, it's not that way. This rhythm just feels natural to me and when I think about it, it just makes sense. All right, so for my finish line rhythm, what I attempt to do is take three looks at my opponent. Look number one is the early look. This one is actually optional. I might get an early look at like, 60 to 100 feet. I like to get this look just to verify that my opponent isn't like 
broke like they actually launched off the line there isn't something weird happening where, like they didn't get off the starting line or something like that sometimes i like to get that early look just to verify that this race is on let's go time to execute i don't do this look every time because honestly it doesn't really matter if they're broke you're gonna know by the time you start looking further down the track. When there's not that much ET difference between you and your opponent, you actually could probably see him out of your peripheral vision a little bit, which just further makes this first early look unnecessary. But it's something that I like to do, so I figured I'd include it here. After the early look, I find and focus on the finish line. I don't just glance at it. I don't just spot it quick and move on. I find it focus on it, study it for a second, and relearn my closing rate on the finish line. Focusing in on that foam block or the cone or whatever it happens to be. I'm trying to program my brain to know exactly when I'm going to cross that finish line, even if I'm not looking at it. I can be much more accurate at doing that if I take a second to focus on the finish line. A quick glance just doesn't cut it. Look number two, is what I call decision time. My second look at my opponent is when I'm making the biggest portion of my finish line decision. I'd say this happens somewhere between 300 and 400 foot maybe. Just like with the finish line, during the second look, I'm trying to gauge the opponent's closing rate on me. I try to hold this look for as long as I possibly can to really gain as much information and to be as accurate on that closing rate as possible. Most importantly, I'm trying to decide which of these three things is gonna happen. Number one, if nothing changes, I'm gonna get to the finish line first. Or number two, if nothing changes, my opponent's gonna get to the finish line first. Or number three, it's just too close to tell. I need to pick one of these three possible outcomes during this second look so that I can execute accordingly at the finish line. I'll touch on some factors that influence my finish line decision a little bit later towards the end of the video. After look number two, I find and focus on the finish line yet again. I find the cone, I find the foam block, whatever it is, and I dive into it. This time, I'm staring at the finish line a little bit longer. I'm waiting until a specific point on the racetrack to look back over at my opponent. The point on the racetrack that I am waiting for is the point where I know that I can comfortably turn my head, look at my opponent, and drive the car all the way through the finish line while still focusing on my opponent. I'd say this point is somewhere around 550 feet maybe. Then is look number three at my opponent. Once I know that I can look over and stay looking over at my opponent all the way past the finish line, I turn my head and I focus in on my opponent and I try to execute the best strategy that I can based on the decision that I made back during look number two. And that's basically it. That's basically my finish line rhythm. It's really just three looks. Like I said, you all probably think this sounds a little bit overanalyzed, but I have found that purposely doing this has helped me a lot when I am the slower car. Let's just briefly touch on a few of the factors that influence the decisions that I make at the finish line. The first that we already kind of touched on is who do I think is going to cross first? Not only who is going to cross first, but by how much. I couple that information with how I am dialed. Really, the question that I am trying to ask myself is, what do I have to do to get back to dead on? Am I dialed honest? Do I need to get rid of some? Is there enough room there for me to get rid of what I need to get rid of and still take the strike? Another very important thing that influences my finish line decision is how good did my reaction time feel? Like, did I feel late on the tree? If I felt late, I'll probably give up the stripe more times than not. If I felt like I crushed the tree, then I'll probably try to take the stripe. If I'm not really sure how I felt on the tree, like if I just felt okay or like so-so, I'm not, not sure where I was at. Like I didn't crush it, but I know I wasn't sleeping either. Uh, I guess I'll just probably assume that I'm equal with my opponent and then I'll make my finish line decisions solely based off of how I think I am dialed and does it look like I can take the stripe without going under. All right guys, I hope there was just at least a tiny bit 
of information in this video that you could take away. Maybe give yourself a new idea or a new way to look at something out there at the racetrack. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there's a million different ways to do this and there's a lot of people that have a lot of different opinions. This is just what I found as something that works well for me. If you guys like this style of video, please let me know down in the comments. Should I make more of these kind of tips, tutorial style videos? I kind of wanted to get more into how I dial my car and when I decide to dial honest versus when I decide to not dial honest and how that influences my finish line a little bit too, uh, but didn't have time to get into it in this video. So let me know down in the comments, is that something you'd be interested in hearing more about? That's going to wrap up this video. You guys, please, if you enjoyed this video, Womp on the like button, it means so much to me. Visit the Golf Star TV Swag Shop to support the creation of videos just like this one. And you guys know I'll be hanging out down in the comment section below. So drop me a line, let me know what you think. I'm calling it, wrapping it up. See you guys in the next one. Later!